Math Magicians, it's Dr. Dickinson. And today I'm going to be talking about using an abacus or a rec and rec to teach some of the basic operations in math. So I got a video request to show how I might use a digital tool for subtraction. So I'm going to start with addition and build on that to subtraction. I'm also going to extend into multiplication and division. Because when we teach one skill, we're helping to build on another skill. So our kiddos start in kindergarten counting on one to one, counting with one to one correspondence. So they can start using these digital tools for counting. Over time, they'll be able to see a pattern that the red represents five and the white also represents five. So in some ways, we're teaching them early addition without actually putting in any symbolic form. As an extension of that, our students can start thinking about ways to make a number. So they're able to do what is called subitizing, which is an effective strategy to be efficient when they're counting, adding, subtracting. Recognizing this as five, and one more as six, or two more as seven. They can start thinking about that as symbolic form. So things like subitizing happens every day. When I see a red octagon, I know a stop sign is happening. So using visual manipulatives and visual representations consistently across the arc of our math program is essential. As you all know, in our early math programs, our students are counting also by twos and fives and tens. So we can build on those patterns of counting by twos as such, as well as counting by fives and fives. So students can start counting by fives as well. And once they're able to do that, starting with counting by fives and counting by tens, then they can start recognizing patterns. They would see automatically that three rows is equal to three tens and so on and so forth. So they're continuing to build these associations within the base 10 system. So educators, when we see a problem like, for example, 32 plus hmm, 20, uh, 21, let me write that down for us. They can build that. They can start working with these visual tools to build a representation for that additions equation. Here we go. <laughs> and then we can start transferring that visual representation into symbolic form. So I have 32, that would be three tens. and two ones plus 21. Here's 10, 20, and now I need one more. Notice while I was doing that, you might have thought, aha, uh -huh. by using that visual model, I'm also establishing an understanding of place value, which can be challenging for students if they haven't had any of those experiences actually decomposing or breaking apart a number. All right, so we looked at it from addition. Now to my friend who emailed me and asked me about subtraction, we can do that same thing. Let's say I have 32 minus 21. Well, I would start with the whole, which is 32. So 10, 20, 30, bringing over two. And now I'm going to just take away 21. Again, building on that idea of 21, it doesn't matter where I take it away. I don't have to count on one to one because what the more I'm seeing these visual models, the more efficient I can be. There's 10, there's 20, there's one. Now I can see that I still have here one group of 10 
and one, one. 10 and one make 11. So that is my answer. All right, let's talk about subtraction with regrouping. This always comes up and it's not that kids really struggle with what it means conceptually. It's that they actually haven't had enough experiences working with concrete models. So let's take, for example, 42, take away 19. All right. Now we know we're going to have to subtract here, but we don't even need to talk about it with our students. We can just have them begin by building 42, 10, 20, 30, 40, and then going to take away 19. Now I can even round up and say, hey, 19 is close to 20. So I'm gonna start by taking away 20 and then put back one that I took away. Now I can see my answer without having to do any regrouping is two tens and a one, which equals 21. All right, so we did counting, we did addition, we did subtraction and subtraction with regrouping. And just so you all know that that algorithm is not actually taught until fourth grade. So you wanna provide tons of concrete experiences. If you're not providing those concrete experiences, your kids are gonna get caught up in place value. They're gonna struggle with place value. And so they won't be able to do things like rounding or regrouping, or even long division. It's all gonna be challenging. So it's really important to just spend that time in those concrete spaces, even if they get that right away. So let's talk about multiplication. So now that we've had some experiences here with these base 10, let me erase our problem and we can do a multiplication problem. Let's say I have three, times 10. And as you know, starting with multiplication, we want to start with the twos and fives and tens because multiplication is, in essence, repeated addition. And our students have had experiences counting by twos and fives and tens. So we start there for multiplication. Now let's build on that. So I, all I need to do is show me three groups of 10. That's 30. Easy peasy. We could do another one. We can say, what about five oops, times six? So that means I'm gonna have five groups of six. Again, the wreck and rack is the way to go because I can easily create here those groupings and kids get caught up in that. But remember, we want to start with um, visual models for multiplication. So I have one group of six, two groups of six, three groups of six, four groups of six, five groups of six. And we want our students to be able to read that in symbolic form as five groups of six. And now they can count. They can count in many ways. That's why I love number talks. They can count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and then just add on one more, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So now I know that five groups of six is 30. All right, are you ready for more? We can even do division with the wreck and rack. I just showed this to my daughter because she was struggling with just seeing it in symbolic form and not having that visual representation. So let's say we have a division problem such as 30, divided by five. So just like subtraction where I started with the whole and then I broke up into parts, I can do that as well here. So I'm gonna start with 30. There's 30 right here. And I'm gonna see how many groups of five I can fit into 30. So here's my 30, these first three rows. Let's see how many groups. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so 30 divided by five equals 
six. There are six groups of five that can fit into 30. What about a harder problem? What if I had something with a remainder? Ooh la la. Like 41 divided by three. So let's start with that whole. Let's start with 41. Let's let's create 41. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, and I'm going to leave one here. So now this is 41. How many groups of three can fit into 41? Now I'm just going to count by threes. three, four, five, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 18. All right, so let's see. I have one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 11, 12, and I can fit another group of three. So that would make 13 groups of three plus two left over. So my answer is 13 remainder two. And I can always check that by saying 13 times three is 39 plus two is 41. So that is correct. Well, I hope you got to see the value of why using virtual tools and Using those tools, whether it is a virtual tool or is a physical tool, you can get an abacus pretty much anywhere, um, can support our students along their progression of maths. And certainly when we do use that same tool consistently, it allows our students not to get caught up in the frustration of that tool. It allows them to be efficient with that tool and it allows them to build and build and build. And that's what I love about teaching math. Till next time, Math Magicians, please keep adding your comments and letting me know what other videos you'd love to see. And thank you for subscribing and supporting my channel. Bye-bye.